Welcome back to the Ascension series. I'm Dime. Let's dive in. I got some questions um, in emails, which I love because it lets me know what you guys want to talk about. So we're going to go over the questions. And then I want to talk about October. We've got some big vibes coming this month and they're intense and they're wild and they're beautiful. They have opportunity to be incredible, actually. Um, but the theme for October is all about leveling up into your highest timeline. So that looks like love, money, and purpose. So I want to break apart how to take advantage of that energy and what that looked like for me on my journey in order for me to arrive in my highest timeline. So let's dive in, shall we? We're going to start with questions. Um, there's only one that I haven't been able to answer through TikTok. So the question, I got a beautiful email from an incredible soul who I'm really excited about. Um, and the question the email is something along the lines of, I'm going to paraphrase here, that they've been doing a lot of energy work. They've been doing a lot of connecting into what they thought was their highest guide. And with that came this knowing or this desire to integrate with pyramid energy. And so they've been doing that and then got some feedback in regards to the elites using the pyramids for something of their own. I don't want to get flagged here. So I'm going to try and keep the terminology super simple. I'm going to call it low vibration um, just because I don't, I don't want to get marked. So <laughs> here we go. Um, and then the other part of that question or the second half was, how do I connect to the one true divine power? How do I connect in and um, so that I can see my highest timeline? So we're going to start at the top, work our way down, shall we? When it comes to lower vibration, using different things in the world, here's the, it's really simple. I'm going to put it like this and I'm going to start to be really blunt about these messages, bringing them forward because there's so much bullshit out there in regards to is the thing that's happening on the fourth, you know, part of an activation because somebody got poked and there's something in your body and, ugh, and are the pyramids attached to, and I don't mean to be mocky when I say any of that. I remember going through the rabbit holes and the deep dives and the curiosity and the thinking that there was this horrible agenda for humanity and humanity was being suppressed and controlled. Okay. So as lovingly as I can say about this piece, I'm just going to flatline put it out there. We were created by another species. Have we been modified? Mm -hmm. Yes. We do the exact same thing to everything else that grows on this planet. We do it to our plant life. We do it to farm produce. We do it to the animal kingdom. We do the exact same thing that has been being done to us. So where do we get the self-righteous attitude of like, we get to be free? That's my like ego coming in and being like, who the hell do you think you are? <laughs> like dime, like, why do you think that you should be able to change this? Um, so there's that piece. Are we a higher evolved species? That's a matter of perspective. Um, I think that we are obnoxiously destructive, um, but I'm not going to go all the way down that. I could rant about that for a very long time. But what I will say is your awakening journey, your ascension, moving into anchoring into 5D, we are putting so much hype on what it's going to be and what it looks like and what needs to be done. This is what it truly is. And I talk a lot about this very unfiltered in the recorded program, fully awaken and ascend that's on our website. Um, it's an evolutionary process. So everything is evolving. Everything where everything is evolving from a lower vibration to a higher vibration, the same way a seed has to go into the ground and combust itself and navigate through the dirt to find the surface, ah, awakening, and then make roots and grow, make roots, grow, make roots, grow. It's the same thing for everything, not just our planet, not just our solar system, not just our galaxy, not just our universe, but across the board, everything is in an evolutionary process. And if we spend half a second putting all of our focus on fear, 
on all of the stuff that's out there. Um, and we put our energy into that and we start to stress about it and we start to think, oh, I've got to fight for this. Oh, I've got to create change for this. We're adding to the problem. Universal flow goes where energy or focus is. Okay. I've said this in almost every video, whatever you put your focus on is what you are exaggerating in your experience. You're adding to your a vibration, the law of attraction responds to that. If there is this bucket of let's get everybody really up in arms and really upset and th- give them all of this stuff. And let's focus on every possible, you know, theory that's out there. We're pouring into that bucket, that bucket's going to start to overflow. And we're going to have a lot more things to be concerned about the potentials to be concerned about. Look at how many rabbit holes have opened up just in the last two years. Yes, there is gross things. Yes, there is low vibrational things. Yes, there is high vibrational things. You have the freedom to make a choice about where you put your focus. You have the freedom to become whatever vibration serves you. So when it comes to the pyramids or lower energy, lower vibrational things or collectives, capitalizing on things, it won't impact you if you are not low vibration. It will have zero impact on you. You get to choose, right? So I'm hoping that makes sense. Stop doing it. Stop torturing yourself. Stop getting all up in arms. You're fueling what they want. I truly, how am I going to word this? I will word it like this. The biggest agenda, the biggest agenda is we feed off fear. Low vibration feeds off low vibration. So what can they put out there to create low vibration so that we can fuel them, so that we can add to the power, so that we can add to the slowing down of this evolutionary process for the collective of humanity, our animal kingdom, our plant kingdom, all those things. That's the biggest agenda. So if you are going down the rabbit holes and getting up in arms and having endless conversation about what the poke did or what it will do or what this whole phone thing on the fourth is going to do or what's going on with the pyramids or what's going on with former leaders or potential new leaders, you took the bait and you're adding to the confusion and you're adding to the fear that they're feeding off of. It's literally that simple. So if you want to take your power back and you want to support change, This is probably really triggering for a lot of you. I'm sorry, but it hard truth. You're adding to the problem. If you're participating in it through thought, through energy, through conversation, through pouring your concerns into it, creating content over it, fighting for it, bringing awareness to it. Just do you, I joke, but not joke. My opinion (laughs) is my opinion. So therefore it belongs to me, not the world. And this, what I'm sharing with you right now, isn't necessarily my opinion. I have a lot of opinions, but I don't think it's necessary to add to the fear. I don't think it's necessary to add to the problem or the confusion or the whatever, right? The more we move into what's, what's my solution? What's my solution? What can in my meat suit and my ego and myself do to feel better about this situation, do it and let everyone else make their decision. Because even if, when it came to the poke, I had a really good conversation. I did not expect to go off on this tangent, but I'll be done in a minute. I promise when it came to the poke. Okay. I remember sitting with a beautiful sister and one of her family members was going to do it. And she very much was against it. And so there was a lot of conversation about family member, please don't. Here's all of the things. Please don't, please don't, please don't. And that family member did. And that soul did not. Your body, when it comes to making decisions, including the poke or 
smoking or sex, one night stands or food or sugar or wine or whatever it be, whatever story you have attached to the thing you are participating in will be your result. If you come into neutrality and say, my body knows exactly what to do with this, to release it, to whatever, process it, handle it, whatever, your body will do it. Whatever your belief attached to the thing. So if you believe sugar is bad, if you believe calories are bad, if you believe fat is bad and you're ingesting that, your body's like, cool, I guess we'll do bad things with this. It doesn't have to work that way. I I joke about my three food groups, nutrition, hydration, pleasure. That's it. That's a small example. But everything I go into, I take the mindset of what is my actual belief about this? What is my true belief about what my body's going to do with this? And then I proceed based on that belief. If it serves me, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But your body knows exactly what to do with it if you truly believe that your body knows what to do with it. So we don't have to get up in arms. And I realize that's a super unpopular opinion, especially when it comes to the poke. And I certainly have my opinions on that. But it doesn't matter. What matters is what you choose in your vibration to experience. So there's that piece. There is an agenda of let's feed off of fear the same way we have an agenda of making money. We creating more produce, putting stuff on produce, the way we control our animal kingdom, the way we treat, we own land like that in itself just boggles me that it's like, oh, this piece of earth is for me and not for you. (laughs) Like even that boggles me. I think we're an interesting species. We are far from evolved. We are far from awoke, awoke, awakened. I don't know. We are far from that as a collective, but like, um, similar to rock climbing, every time someone goes up and anchors in, it allows the next level to do the same thing, to, to lift up and to anchor. And then the next person goes anchors. And then the next goes anchors. It's a process. We are not all going to awake at once. We are not all going to evolve at once. There's not one great big poof awakening where everybody's like, oh, now I get it. It's not that. It's the same way a tree consistently recycles itself. So it creates seeds, those seeds drop, those seeds become trees and the cycle continues and continues and continues. It's just a process and we're going to get there. It's inevitable. It's evolution, not Darwinism, evolution of vibration. Everything's doing it. We've already come so far in some components. Look how many people are waking up, but it is all about, I want you to come right back into the intention. What's my vibration? What am I putting my focus on and adding to? Am I adding to solution? Am I adding to war? Am I adding to unity? Am I adding to don't do it? It's wrong. Am I adding to chaos and fear with my social media content? Or am I adding to, here's what you do for you. Right. So I want you to kind of look at it like that. I did not expect to go on that tangent. So let's move on from that before I keep going. Um, and I realize that that's probably triggering and alarming for some of you. If it is, email me. Let's talk it out. I will happily go a little bit deeper if there's questions on that, but I just wanted to give a quick overview. Let's dive into connecting into the one pure divine source. And so the question was something about how do I connect into the one true source that will show me my highest timeline? So your highest timeline is your highest vibration. So you're always in your highest timeline. Nothing else exists except for what your vibration is in this moment. If you don't enjoy it, vibrate higher. So the timeline piece, okay? It's evolution. Same thing like we were just talking about. You will continue to evolve as you move through by becoming self-aware. Your vibration stems from your belief structure, not your thought, your belief structure in your subconscious, which is 95% of thought. 5% is up here. 5% is in the evident. Like, oh, this is what I'm thinking. 95 is hidden belief structure. Your belief structure is solidified in and around the age eight, 
and then you proceed to move forward. So your beliefs on love, sex, money, being seen, being heard, being valued, abuse, um, your beliefs on what your role as your gender is, what your role in neutrality is, what your, how we create solution, like all your beliefs are established. And then you start to function off of that belief creates an emotion, which creates a vibration. It's the frequency, which creates a perception, the veil you're looking through that creates your outcome. So your belief structure is what's allowing you to be where you are. When you go in and you heal those belief structures, if you want to do that, there's two programs we have, your inner child healing program. That's really, really powerful, but even more so the fully awaken and ascend program because it has the inner child stuff in it. Um, so those are your like first stepping stones for figuring out how the hell do I do this, right? Like what, what's my belief? How do I find this? Um, but you can look at your life and see where there's lack and that's going to be evident of. So it's a starting point. So your belief structure is going to create the vibration. The more you become self-aware of what that belief is, what vibration it's creating, you begin to morph and shift it. And then you move into a higher timeline, a higher vibration. So there is no ready for this, like take this and keep it. Okay. There is no destination. There is no end point. There is no, I'm arrived when. There is no such thing. This is not a race. There is no pressure to become something better, bigger, more. The only thing that's required is for you to figure out what makes my vibration, the vibration of my desire in this moment. That's it. It's not a race. It's not a process. You're not doing it wrong. You're not fucking up. You're not disconnected. None of that's real. What's real is my vibration is the law of attraction is responding to my vibration. The law of vibration and the law of attraction are two of the universal laws out of 12. If you're only trying to manifest using one universal law, you are not using all 12. To me, that doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why people do that. Like the five steps to manifesting, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh my God, no, there's 12 laws. So I'm feisty today. 12 laws. So the law of vibration and the law of attraction like attracts like they work in sequence. They don't work separately. So you can't just use one. You have to become embody the vibration of your desire. So the law of attraction responds to your desire, not your undesire. That's not even a word anyways. So when it comes to your highest timeline, there's no such thing. There's nothing painted that says, this is what you'll do. There's no there's no end game. You in your life can take four little baby steps in your ascension process or a million. And that's on you. It's up to you. There is no such thing as this is your be all end all at all. There's no such thing as this is the person you have to be with. There's no such thing as this is the job you have to do. There's potential based on where you are at vibrationally. So when I look back on my career, when I started in divine purpose, it wasn't what it is right now. It perfectly matched my vibration. It was great. I was making close to six figures. I was happy. I was fulfilled. I had clientele. I got to travel. I got to live in Central America for a really long time. It was wonderful. And it perfectly matched my vibration. That's where I was at. And then when I realized that I had some beliefs about sustainability, some beliefs that were limiting me on my fear of sustainability as just my journey, I went into that, started rewriting that. And then all of a sudden I landed here and where I'm sitting at, I could not have conceived back 10 years ago at all. I could not have conceived this, this level of professionalism because <laughs> I'm so professional. I'm like such a nerd. Um, and I swear far too much, but anyways, but this level of career, this level of souls that I'm connected to this level of the company where there's so many employees and I'm the owner founder of it. The fact that we touch lives all over the planet, that I get to travel for retreats all over the planet, that I'm on several board of directors, that I work with doctors, that I like never would have conceived this at all. 
So your mind can only conceive what's possible for you. And as you raise your vibration by embodying beliefs that are serving to you and healing the ones that are not, you lift your vibration, which is just a more expansive vibration. And then the law of attraction responds to that. So your highest timeline isn't something that source is going to show you. You can get glimpses of your potential, but you have a soul compass. You already know your potential. You actually already know what's holding you back. A hundred percent. We all know. We just don't want to admit it. We don't want to look at it. We don't want to do the dive into the discomfort. We instead much prefer to go into shame and guilt because that's what we're conditioned to do because we are conditioned to produce fear-based, low-based vibration to fuel how things used to run. We're a fuel source. So your highest timeline is something that you will easily walk into. The hardest part, and this is where I'm going to get into a little bit more of the stuff and connect it with October, but the hardest part is making the decision to control your mind. So I'm going to come back to that in a minute and finish this question, but I am going to write it down because my mind doesn't work like that. Okay. So your highest timeline is available to you. The, your power is not outside of you. So this is a little bit of a brain fuck right now, what I'm going to talk about, and it's going to trigger some of you a little bit, um, but that's not my intention. My intention is to share with you what has brought myself into my highest timeline and thousands of students and all of the mentors that are working alongside me now. So I don't want to take up too much time. There's an amazing, amazing um, description of this in the program Fully Awaken and Ascend called the Sea of Consciousness. So to put it as simply as possible, universal flow is called light in the quantum realm. So in quantum physics, they call it light. Spirituality calls it consciousness or I don't know, there's consciousness, compassion, unconditional love, light. It's all the same vibration. Everything is a vibration that materializes in front of us or in us or whatever. So each one of your 40 trillion something cells has in the center point, consciousness, light, God, source, each one of your cells, each one of them. And then you've got all of the belief structure frequency stuff that's creating your reality. I'll net it in around that for the easiest analogy. So universal flow is what exists. Source or the universe would indicate you as much as it would me, as much as it would my phone and my room and my house and it's flow, it's consciousness. So there is no power outside of you to connect into the purest version of consciousness or the ultimate source or the ultimate creator. Understand that that is you. It is what's in your cellular structure. It's in your body. You are it. You are connected to it. There's an analogy that I've used. If there was a sea of consciousness that was source, that was God, that was all of that creator power. And I took a glass and I scooped it. You've heard me probably talk about this before. And I scooped up the water and I held it above the water. And I asked if this is this source, what's in here. And a lot of people say yes. And they believe that when you die, that the water pours back into connecting into source, but it is separate from it. It is the belief that you are separate from source that prevents you from using your internal compass, the, the compass that's attached to what most people call soul or consciousness or creator flow or universal flow or source or God or whatever. You are it, but the belief that you are separate from it will create separate. Now, when it comes to lower vibration, attaching on to people and working with people, this is part of the question. 
So I meditate, I connect into my guides, I channel, I get direction. It's awesome. But how do I know what I'm working with? And is this in my highest favor? And what if it's a low vibration? What if it's something bad and dangerous for me? I went through that fear for a very, very, very long time. I think so long. Oh my God. So back to vibration. Two points. With everything, your vibration is matched by matching vibrations. Like attracts like. So if you are a fear-based, angry, greedy, low vibrational, mm, you're going to feel a little bit of that. Any energy can only reflect you. One of the other universal laws is the law of correspondence. So the law of correspondence is everything is a reflection of you. So spirit can only reflect you. Entity can only reflect you. There's a lot of information out there. Um, I'm a psychic. I am a medium. I experience all of it. They will come and attempt to trigger fear to see if they can fuel off of you. They won't hurt you. They won't touch you. They won't possess you. That's not something that is going to just happen. They match you. They, you will get triggered into discomfort. You will feel their vibration the same way as a cold wind. If you're warm and a cold wind goes by and you feel it, you feel it. But that doesn't mean you have to partake in it. You can wrap up. You can go back into your vibration. So you that's the truth of it. That's what you're going to experience. It's, nothing is going to latch onto you unless you allow it to. Invite it to, encourage it to, participate in it. The same way with the way we participate in media. So what you can do if your ego, it's all about don't put yourself in fear, right? So I learned this example. I learned this a long time ago about fear. I was very uncomfortable with the ocean and the darker it was, the more uncomfortable it was for me. And I remember trying to conquer this fear by going in and going in and going in and trying to swim in the ocean and trying to do this. And the dark water was like, oh, I don't like it. Like it just would trigger a irrational, involuntary reaction of fear. And so one of the lessons that I learned through that was don't put yourselves in situations that are going to invoke fear. Just don't do it. Learn. You don't have to conquer everything, right? We, I don't have to conquer my discomfort with the ocean. I can just respect it and be neutral about, I don't have a desire to go in it and I don't, but I also am uncomfortable in it. So that just adds to my desire not to do it. So that's fine. I don't have to change that. You don't have to change your fears. So don't put yourselves in situations that invoke fear because it's all about staying in high vibration or expansion vibration. So when it comes to your meditations or your sleep state, this is, this is a powerful tool. If you feel that you might go into fear or anticipation of something unpleasant happening, then let your ego set a boundary. It's going to take you out of fear. So you can say, I forbid anything low vibrational to work with me. It's intention. You can't get this wrong. Um, way, way, way back for me, I would go into my meditative state or right before I fell asleep and I'd say, I call upon the guides that are connected to me that are the highest vibration that are here for my healing and my love and my support, the support for my journey into my highest vibration. I call upon Archangel Michael. I call upon um, my galactic entities that are here for my highest evolutionary process or my highest awakening and everything else is forbidden. So be it. Please allow me now that we are connected to feel love from you to heighten my comfort. And again, focus. You don't want to say to help me release fear, to help me not feel fear, to help me not be afraid because then the focus is on the fear and you're going to get more of that. So it's about flipping it into positive, present requests. So to feel your love so that I may reside in comfort all night or during my meditation. So there's that. That was a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. Let's go on into October. <laughs> uh, okay. So October is all about 
oh man, leveling up. Like there's energy available for us that is going to trigger the hell of you and give you an opportunity to go, oh, that's one of my limiting beliefs. That's what I'm putting my focus on. I can change my vibration. And as you change your vibration, you level up, right? So October is all about stepping into more money, more love, and more divine purpose, which is so interesting. When Sarah Rose and I were recording the monthly forecast, um, so that's up on the website, diamondo.com. Um, it was like money, 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 money. I was like, what? I've never seen a month so focused on money and so focused on love and the, like, it just blew my mind. So October is going to be opportunity to level up. When I say opportunity to level up in ego terms, it means I thought I fixed this. What the hell is going on? Why am I struggling? That's what your ego is going to be with. So I like to take that as you have a compass. Your ego is only a storyteller. Your soul, your essence, your consciousness is the thing that says, can, this is what lifts our vibration. So your ego is going to start telling stories about, um, and it's funny because I caught myself this morning. So today's the third that I'm recording this and every Sunday through, I hate these emojis on zoom. I thought I had it turned off. I've tried everything. My goodness. Um, so every Sunday night through to Tuesday evening is going to be heavy energy of I fear. So whatever your predominant fears that are desiring to be nurtured, loved, healed are going to surface. And I found myself this morning having a minor um, moment of my fear of sustainability kind of rearing its ugly head. I think that one's going to be a forever imprint, but we'll see. Um, so that's what's surfacing for me right now. And then as we move through the rest of the week, it's awareness on how do I desire to change that? What is the story I desire to tell? What is the solution? What is the outcome I really desire to experience? So we're going to have this every single week <laughs> and it's all focused on money. That could look like hidden expenses. It could look like, now, I mean, we do have Mercury coming out of retrograde that came out yesterday. We do have Pluto coming out of retrograde. There's a lot of like really cool new moon vibes and stuff like that. Um, so it, we could really move through this with ease if we are aware of it, but you're going to have your fears surface up for you to go, Oh, that's what my soul wants to heal right now. That's what my consciousness wants to heal right now. So pay attention to the story that you are telling, pay attention to chronic behavior. Are you checking your bank account a lot? Are you writing up your budget a lot? Are you counting pennies? Are you being like, oh, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. I can't afford it. I hear that all the time. I can't afford it. Well, now you can't because <laughs> you just put that out there. Um, so instead moving it into I just did a TikTok on this. So you can go to TikTok and see, I did a, a quick little three minute on how to really heal your relationship with money. Um, super easy. It's not that hard actually. But what's funny is that was the hardest thing for me. So the hardest thing for me was loving my body, letting love partnership in and letting unlimited financial flow in. Those were the three things that took me a really long time to conquer. And I know what not to do. So let's dive into those tools because this is October. They're specific to these things. So I think um, financial flow might've been the last one. They all sort of started coming together at the same time. And then one would flourish and one would fall. And then the other one would flourish and the other one would fall. So I sort of went through all three of them at the same time over the course of like three years um, before I really mastered it. So Bringing in money, you can go check out that TikTok. I'm going to try and do quite a few of those, but it's basically if money was a person and they showed up, what would be your fear with them? Would your fear be, you're going to leave me? You're not going to listen to me. I'm not deserving of you. Um, I'm not lovable. I'm not ready or willing to receive. I'm not capable. Um, my fear was fear of sustainability. Like you're going to walk out on me or you're going to pull the rug out from under me. So I know you can come and I know I'm worthy of love. That's awesome. And then you're going to rip it away. 
just like everything else in my life. So that was my limiting structure around receiving financial flow. So if money was a person, what would your fears be with that person? And then start to work on healing that. Love and purpose. So the divine, becoming a divine mentor certification program that I run, I think I have four seats left in it. It starts the very beginning of November. It's 12 week certification program. Um, but your work and your homework starts October. So that's up, that's available. You just have to email me to get that information. It is a financial investment. I am going to change your life. I've been doing it for a very long time. If you do the work and you under, you dedicate yourself to this, you will arrive in divine purpose within 12 weeks. Um, Nothing's guaranteed it's on you if you do that or not, but it's a group program and it's an investment because the money will come. Money is the aftermath of what you're about to do. So if you're really ready to jump and change your life, email me because I've got four spots left. But divine purpose is all about taking people as far as you have gotten. And we spend a lot of time focusing on, I'm not there yet. A lot of energy goes into when I get there. I haven't arrived. I really want to, I really ache. I really need to. We put a lot of energy into that low vibrational conversation instead of the awareness of how far you've actually come. So the first question I always ask when I'm going to work with someone, if I let them into the mentorship program is what would you say to your 20 year old self or your 15 year old self right now about where you are? And that's a little bit of an eye opener of like, oh, because my 20 year old self she would have done anything, anything to be sitting where I'm sitting right now, anything. And I can say that even 10 years ago, before my partner came in my life, every year has been an upgrade every single year. Some of them really slow, um, but it's been an upgrade. So I know that past versions of myself, even a year ago, me would be, would do anything to be here. This was the desire. Um, Instead of looking forward on what you want, we want to look at where did I come from? And then you'll be able to take people exactly where you are. Soul purpose can be a lot of different things from art, healing, counseling, writing, singing, dancing, yoga, being a parent, being a partner. Like there's a lot of different things that it can be. And it's up to you how far you want to take that. There will be a predominant purpose for you, a predominant vibration that you are here to master and support others on that journey. And that can be love. It could be acceptance. It could be unity. It could be a gateway keeper. Like there's so many things. I have the gift of seeing your highest potential when I do a book of life session. Um, I don't have openings for those right now. They're referral only, but I can see your highest timeline. I can see your highest potential with where you are at right now and what's blocking you. So there is the opportunity to arrive into this is available for me if I course correct these limiting beliefs. And then when you get there, you can go again and again and again. It's endless. It's limitless what you can attain in this life, but it's not about arriving there. It's about the realization of how far you've come. And when you realize how far you've come, and what you've mastered in your life and what your true powerful intentions are. And you put your focus on that, that becomes the vibration that's radiating into your vortex, your electromagnetic field that the law of attraction responds to. And that's your quickest game changer in regards to purpose. So with the energies available in October, the love, money, purpose energy is incredible opportunity, not challenge. It is not a, why is this happening to me? It is a, what is my soul demonstrating? What is my ego demonstrating to me through the law of correspondence, through the reflection for me to level up? So please keep that mindset. When it comes to navigating into love, navigating into, I'm going to go kind of back to all of the things happened at once for me. And like I said, love, like romance, like my person, um, 
my current partner. So partnership, romance, falling in love with my body and healing cancer and all of those things. And my money all kind of arrived at the opportunity to conquer all three at once. And they sort of did this, like one would go up, one would go down sort of thing. And I remember always saying for years, I used to say all the time, when I'm single, I'm wealthy. (laughs) When I have love, I'm broke ass poor. What is going on with me? And I couldn't figure out what was going on there. And then when I'm single, my body flourishes. And when I'm in a relationship, my body's happy, but it gains weight. Like what is going on? And you know, you hear terms of like, oh, you're hunting weight and blah, 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 blah. Right. That wasn't it for me. For me, it was the fear that if I had everything, then it would hurt way more when it got pulled away from me. That if I had everything, then it would be too painful there's too much risk. And there was the fear that if I had everything, then I would be shining. And as a little girl, I never wanted to take the spotlight from the other young life in my, in my world. So there was another person in my life when I was a little girl who I was just my world, the love of my life, still very much love of my life, although we're not connected anymore. And I never wanted to make that person feel small. And so I morphed, I learned to morph myself in very different ways. There was a lot of abuse in the homes that I was bounced around in. And I didn't want that abuse bestowed upon anybody else. Was I a dysfunctional child? And was I great at always protecting the other person? Not so much, not so much, Um, but I did my best. Anyway, so my belief because of that situation was, if I shine, I, it's dangerous. It's dangerous for other people that I care about. They'll be hurt. Or I, in the, how many of you have said this? Cause this was a part of my journey as well. Here I am in whatever awareness in my awakening process. And if I go too far, my partner won't catch up. I went through that for a little while. It's not how it works. Energy matches energy. Your partner will match you. And so as I started moving through and letting these things come into my life, I did in another Ascension video, the trust. I think the last one that I did last week, I talked about trust and I talked about the cottage on the shoreline, having everything in it and my person being on the shoreline and knowing that he would show up first and then everything else would get better. And it didn't go the way I thought it would. He did show up first and then a whole bunch of stuff went to shit and a whole bunch of stuff went great. Um, it it was a, it was a wild ride for me. Um, but what I know now in hindsight is this, I, for whatever reason have been given one gift that's been with me since childhood, minus my psychic abilities. And it's a game changer. And I know it doesn't sound like much, but it's a game changer. So the hardest part of your journey is going to be controlling your mind. 100% controlling the thought, controlling the story, controlling the desire, not like controlling the don't go into fear, instead go into this tool that I'm going to teach you. That's the hardest part of the journey. The hardest part, I promise you, is making the choice to use this tool that I'm about to teach you. That's the hardest part is making the choice, controlling the mind. So when I discovered that this is what was working, I was at an all-time low, low, low. I did not want to be on earth anymore. I was overweight. I was very unhealthy. I was drinking a tremendous amount, um, smoking a tremendous amount. I was lost and aching in a very dysfunctional relationship. And I was avoidant. I was like, maybe if I just have another nap, I'll feel better. Maybe if I just meditate again, something will come through. And I was avoidant through meditation and sleeping and sadness and really, really, really heavy energy. And then I realized that the gift that was given to me since childhood, this one tool was what was going to change it. 
So sometimes we have to experience the contrast, the thing we don't want before we really propel into desire. A lot of us have to hit that point, which a lot of us call rock bottom, but that like, it can't get any worse. Like what is going on? So the one thing, and I'm going to exaggerate on this a little bit, like I'll add some more to it. For whatever reason, when I was a young child, I was so visually, (laughs) visually captivated by pretty things. So shiny things, um, galactic colors, obviously like midnight blues, or, um, there's a stone called star sapphire. Like to me, that was like the best thing in the world. My mom had a ring and I used to play with it. Um, I could sneak into her room and look at it and just be like, I was so in love with it. Um, so I was so visually captivated by things that stirred my soul and I was so captivated by music and in the moments where there was something visual for me or auditory for me, that was very enjoyable. I would stop and be like, Oh, I love this. I love this. I don't care that my life is shit. I love this. And I had this gift to be completely captivated in gratitude, completely captivated in gratitude, not fake gratitude, not like hashtag thankful, grateful, blessed, um, live, laugh, love. No, not the fake shit. The real like, oh man, I love this thing. (laughs) Um, And I was kind of the same way with a few of like, the very few toys that I had as well, but there was things that were just pleasing to me. And I would in the hard times, because, you know, being bounced around to multiple homes and abandonment and very predominant mental health in my birth home and alcoholism and drug abuse and sexual abuse, not my drug abuse, but me being sexually abused by, you know, women in my world. Um, I would go to the thing and part of that. Yeah. A trauma response, avoidant response, because I didn't want to deal with it. And that's what kept me safe. However, that stuck with me. And I purposely, that's why I talk about the mantra. Thank you. I love you. You guys heard me say, thank you. I love you. It was in the newsletter. Thank you. I love you. Because when we slip into present positive truth, the gratitude that we actually can summon up and find within ourselves. It's a megaphone for the law of attraction. It's mega strong. And you can't fake this happiness, but you have the ability to make the choice to control your mind, to seek happiness to seek moments of joy, to hold on to those moments of joy, to pursue things that make you go, thank you, I love you. Like, I don't know if I've openly shown you guys on this platform. Oh, and I don't think I can because my mic is attached, but let me see if I can turn this into my messy, messy, messy room. But that shelf is full of beautiful gifts that I've received from clients all over the world. Like there's stuff from Ireland, there's Jamaica, there's Scotland, there's Italy, there's like all over. And when I walk into my office, one, my inner child would faint. She'd be like, mom, I love this. But when I walk in here, I'm like, oh, Every day I stop at that shelf for five minutes with my coffee in the morning. I make my coffee. I go to the window. I look at the squirrels. I come in to set up my office and I stop and I look at that gratitude. And it's a reflection of my gratitude. I use colored pens all the time because I think they're pretty. I have sparkly shit all over the house. My fiance, thank goodness he's a flexible man because there's unicorn shrapnel in a lot of places. Um, but it, 
that's what, that's what captivates me and lets me move back into, all right, I've got this, like I've got this. And so to wrap up, cause I know I'm talking forever. Um, I started with that, making the choice to just find this one. Thank you. I love you. And then it morphed into, um, when all three things happened at once. Right. So my partner came into my life and I would hear myself saying, Oh goodness. I love this man. Like, ah, oh, I love my then boyfriend. I love my boyfriend. And now it's my fiance, soon to be husband. And then it morphed into like, I think it started more so with my career. I love my clients. Oh my gosh. That was a great conversation. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this is what I get to do. Like, I love my career. I love that. I get to do this in the world. I love being of service. And then my mentors came in and I was like, oh my gosh, I love so-and-so. And oh my gosh, I am so grateful that I get to mentor the mentors. Oh my goodness. Da, 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 da. And then it morphed into my partner. Oh my gosh. I love my boyfriend. Like, oh my gosh, I love my fiance. And then I landed in this retreat center. And this is the biggest vision that I've had. And well, it's multifaceted, but every time I walk out on a stage where I'm talking into a microphone in front of a lot of people, I'm like, oh, oh I love this landing in the retreat center. When I'm here working, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this. When I'm hosting retreats, when I have clients here one-on-one -on -one privately, um, oh my gosh, I love this. Like, oh, thank you. I love you. Thank you. I love you. And then this morning I found another level. I was like walking around going, fucking love my life. I've been saying that for a month now. My life is phenomenal. I love my life. I love my kitten. I like Trevor. He's, oh God, how can you love a cat so much? I love this cat. I love Frankie. You guys have seen pictures of Frankie. I've got a puppy coming in next week, Roxy. And I'm like, I've got the retreat center. I've got the kitchen of my dreams. I've got the yard. I've got the nature. I've got the forest. I've got the hot tub. I've got the fire pit. I've got the, I'm healthy. I am, my body's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. I love my life. And then this morning I said it and I was like, oh, I want to teach this. I aligned with this. I did it. I love myself. Man, I love myself. So now every time I look at everything that is a reflection of my vibration, I fucking love myself. So I want you to do that. I want you to begin with, is it a shiny object? Is it a Care Bear like I have? Is it a car? Is it your career? Is it your courage? Is it your courage to step and trust that money's the aftermath and go after the things that you want, knowing that money is the aftermath of happiness? Knowing that self-love and your body transforming I like, I don't talk about this publicly, but I'm gonna for half a second. Since being in the retreat center, I've lost like 10 pounds. I haven't changed anything. It's fucking happiness. Like it's, I like, and then the last video I did, the last, I think it was a TikTok. I didn't get one hate comment. I got people being like, you are glowing. And I was like, whoa, what? It's the, aftermath of the highest vibration that you can hold. And that vibration is your choice. It's your choice to pursue happiness. It's your choice to look for a million reasons to say, thank you. I love you. And I don't care how small those reasons are. Mine started with green lights and no line in the grocery store. Mine started with sparkly pens, like start, make the decision to every day how many times can I truly say, oh, thank you. I love you. Oh, pink pen. I love this color. Thank you. I love you. I get a sparkly nail every time I paint my nails, get them done. I get one sparkly one because I love sparkly things so much. I'm like, oh, thank you. I love you. Like, It's that ridiculous. Start with the smallest thing and let it grow and let it grow and let it grow. But every single hour make the choice to control the mind, 
to control the decision to look for the evidence. And the evidence really, truly, one last thing, ready? Every time you say, thank you, I love you, it's a reflection of you. It's an absolute reflection of you. So if you're driving and you're, wow, what a beautiful day. And I love this song and the fresh air. It's so good. That's a reflection of you. And if you're driving and you're like, stupid assholes with their cutting me off and they're like, hello, like move over. That's a reflection of you. If you believe in yourself to go after purpose, it's a reflection of you. Everything is a reflection of you. And I see you when I get your love letters, half the time I'm like, this, like you, this is a reflection of you. This is a reflection of you. So how many times can I say that? Let's like take a shot each time. We'll be hammered in 30 seconds, but you are love. You are the vibration of love. So start saying it. I am love. I am loved. Thank you. I love you. And your whole world will begin to shift. I promise you. It's not fluff. It's not woo-woo. It's actually science. It's your vibration. It's your energy. It's your frequency. But it's also really great. Okay. Talk to your offer like, I don't know, way too long. I don't even know what time it is. Ah. <sighs> Please remember that you are needed on this planet. And if you want it in one of the seats of the Becoming a Divine Mentor, if you're brave enough to take the leap, you know where to find me. I'm waiting. I know who you are too. There's 20 of you in total who I know your name. I know your energy. And I. it's not my role to reach out to you. It's your role to reach out to me. I've already said no to four people because that's not. it's not their turn yet. Um, but I'm taking on 10 and I think there's four seats left. So reach out. Also send me your questions. I love that. I love, I went on way long of a tangent and I'm still gabbing too much, but send your questions. All right. Love you. Continue to be brave, bold, raw, and I will see you next week. Bye guys.